Okay, hello guys. This is hello, another everyone. another episode, another episode of our judo mat talks. My name is Bart Bibrovic. I'm former judoka and strength conditioning coach. I'm doing this small talks with the people all over the world to share some knowledge, ideas, passion about the judo technique and also strain conditioning, injury prevention, and also what's the most important future. And about this future, we'll talk today. With me is my friend from Italy. He's a great person. He got a lot of passion and he did something that I was thinking for many long years. And I am not worried to call him Elon Musk of Judo. Elon Musk of Judo, not because he he has so much money everybody knows this is but i believe what he did can be revolution can be revolution for judo approaching judo training and bringing something that other sports already did emilio welcome to our judo talk and i'm glad that you find the time so we can talk thank you thank you very much for this speech i'm very very happy to share uh, with you and with everyone who follow us, uh, everything we will talk about. Uh, you are too gentle <laughs> calling me the Elon Musk of judo, but, but um, maybe, maybe my vision will be uh, a little bit uh, strange in the, in the, in the moment, at the moment, but I hope that in the future it will help everyone uh, in, our, uh, in our sports. Uh, yeah. So the vision is... Uh, some something comparable but i'm not at his level <laughs> oh, the vision and what i like with you is your vision and passion how you can describe things how you talk about the judo you see similarities like i do for judo movement and we many times was talking about what push the people like you to make those amazing things i'm especially not saying what you did i want you to talk about your project about your passion with other and motivation to push you to help other judo coaches. I know that many people will listen to us, not only in Poland, but most probably in the world through judo training info. I was from this point, I want to also say hello to Felipe, our both friend and, yeah. and Emilio. What was the motivation behind your project? So, uh, I always, uh, since I was an athlete, I, I always uh, think about to control um, the performances and my, my performances and study also the opponent. Uh, I am, I'm here, I, I does not invented anything new. I just develop something that we usually do over the years. But of course, what is changes is the technologies. So. Um, as I as I was telling, uh, when I was an athlete, I, I used to note uh, what my what was my uh, key point uh, of the performances, and um, in the, in one in one uh, in one year, I met some special uh, special people, uh, special persons, special senseis uh, from uh, Poland, and they teach me uh, another way to improve this idea i had based so, on this i had this this um, uh, I, I immediately had this idea to render those paperwork uh, made by pen and paper in some um, in something more technological with the help of the technology but at the time it was not possible because the technology was not so uh, not so high developed. Uh, now it's time to do this. So uh, I always be, I always had this feel, this feeling uh, to, to build something like that, something like I did. Uh, and uh, the motivation, uh, the, the most important motivation is that uh, in one time of my life, I look myself in the mirror and I say, oh, I have this specialization. Why not to share with everybody, with everyone, to take our sports maybe in another level. I make 1%, but every 1% amount is 100%. So my 1% maybe will help someone. 
it's amazing to to hear this and i'm really curious i'm really curious who was those people from poland this is my country this this is my my country that I love, there's a lot of coaches that helped me when I was an athlete. So tell me about those special people that help you develop or inspire you to make that what, what you did already with technology. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I cannot hide my special feeling with, uh, with Poland. Uh, I was there when I was uh, eight, um, 18, 18 years old. Yes. And uh, I met First of all, one people who really bring a revolution in my life, of course, guys, my life is judo. So he brings a revolution in my judo and in my life. He was Janusz Pawłowski. Uh, I, I, I have, I will always tell is my sensei. First, my first sensei was my father. My father gave me all the basics to understand what in the future I learned. But then another, another spin, another boost to my evolution as human being and as a, a judoka and as coach uh, comes from him, comes from Janusz Pawłowski. I'm really, really... Uh, happy to meet him there. I'm grateful to him every day of my life. Then together with him in Zakopane, uh, because we were we were there in, in Zakopane, uh, there were uh, the beloved uh, Richard Geniala, uh, an old man, but with a with a charisma that was impressive, impressive. On the mat, there were those two people who were very, uh, I, I have nothing to say, that instead of impressive, uh, he, all, he also gave me uh, a different point of view of the things. And then the third one, but I, I met him later in the time, uh, it was uh, Marek Adam from, uh, from Gdańsk, because he was a specialist of this, um, statistical analysis and I remember that in 2000 and after after Paris Olympics I had some contact because uh, through through Robert Kravchuk uh, because he needs something to have uh, to to complete a kind of work on the statistics so uh, those are the the three the three people that gave me um, a different different vision a different point of view about the statistics the the utilization of the statistics and how to improve what is my project now my my project that we can say that the, the, it's called the judo data because it's combined judo with data it's it's great to hear that again the Polish people, Polish coaches have influence to others. And this is what you are telling about the all conversation with, with other coaches like like Janusz, like Sensei Genyava, like like uh, Adam. This is this is something that is really important. And I think we as a Polish people we should respect that we had the great coaches with certain amount of vision and we cannot allow ourselves that we thinking we are only ourselves on the mat and this is great point of view how others can be influenced so going further let's talk more about the judo data especially was keeping the little bit secrets what, what is the project but we'll talk ladies and gentlemen today about the judo data the website that i feel like a strain conditioning coach feel like a judo player that can be the future not only for national teams but also for organizations in the in the countries so hopefully if we will go further this can be used on daily basis but multiple people why i'm talking about that because i have the big honor to work in volleyball 
And as we know, statistics in volleyball are very crucial. There is everything in the numbers. We cannot just judge and feeling, oh, this is my nose, this attacker do this, just do one attack and that will be finished. No, in volleyball, data statistics is amazing. It's a very well built. So it's every set finish, head coach getting the paper and see what they play, see the actions and efficiency. What is the key from volleyball? I was thinking many times, wow, do we can have this system in judo? And then through many conversation, uh, video analyze with different program, I, I met Emilio and he showed me what I call the future. Judo data is the program. And I think Emilio can tell more about that, how others can use it, what people can see in that, what information then they can have and how they can use this in different purposes. Yes. So first of all, um, it's um, it's another an, another uh, impressive connection connection between volleyball analysis and judo data. This is because uh, not everyone say not everyone knows that um, uh, a former a former head coach of the uh, Italian dream team. Julio Velasco was the first one who uh, produced a, 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 this kind of, of system, a um, semi-automatic system for the volleyball uh, by using the scouting. So the, the, the on-live uh, analysis of the performance of various athletes. And um, one, one, my, one my big friend, uh, comes from my hometown. My, my hometown is a small, small, small city, but sometimes there are some, some people who is extraordinary. But uh, this friend was one of the most important uh, scout men of the south of Italy. And he introduced me about this, this software. And in this moment, I say, oh, now it's possible to do it. And now, and I start to, um, to study the system to um, to match the technology together with the, with the judo and uh, about uh, about efficiency and about um, and about what you say yes um, everything about the performance can be can be registered and then can be analyzed but uh, for example two big differences between uh, sports like volleyball and sports like like judo, like I don't know, combat sport, is that in the volleyball a coach can um, can change something during the game because they have a total amount of point to reach to finish the set. In judo we have the ippon, we have the ko. So in one moment everything can finish for our athletes. Exactly finish. Oh yes. So. It's most 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 important to work on on data about the performance because everything should be done before the competition. Our time is too short. Our uh, reaction time is too too short to change something big during the, the performance. That's why data will help us to build a tailored patch for our athlete, for our team, and for everything. That's what, uh, this is important because from many studies, it's shown that uh, high level coaches uh, are able to manage only, only 30% of the information coming from a competition. This is not because they are not good. This is because they are so good. So it seems like the big experience uh, close a little bit the point of view, focus only on one uh, aspect they, uh, they want to uh, analyze because of their, their experience. And maybe, maybe it's, it's not, you know, it's not 100%. We are talking about the humans. So it's a, a universe, a sort of universe. But maybe they lose something important uh, or something that is very mm, necessary to analyze and maybe it's connected to, to what 
they are looking at. So the aim of Judo Data is to catalog and give to everyone who is involved in the field of uh, uh, technical director direction, give almost, it's not possible, but almost the 100% of data to uh, analyze with their own point of view, their own experience and makes the difference. So Judo Data don't give a solution. It's a sort of, of picture of what happens and this picture should be analyzed uh, from many, many directions. Maybe the strength conditioning could, could see something and uh, the head coach can see something and uh, I don't know, physio can see something else, but everything from a picture. So it's yes, Judo yes. Data is a tool that I hope it will be helpful in many fields of our sports. Perfect, perfect. I just give you the uh, share screen. So let's show a little bit for our audience. And I will also speak a little bit from my personal experience. For almost two seasons, I was working with one of the best friends of Julio Velasco with Raul Lozano, yeah. big name in uh, Poland, big, big star that he changed. He changed way of thinking about the Polish volleyball and he started a new era of Polish volleyball. As we know right now, volleyball since almost 12, 13 years developed, growing and now becoming one of the strongest team in the world and Europe. What happened yesterday, because yeah. yesterday, again, we're meeting in the special moment. Yesterday, Polish volleyball team win the Champions League in volleyball. Oh, in I Italy. didn't know this. Oh, I didn't ah, know. Oh, really? And this is why. Oh, yeah. In, in you, know, you know, but uh, really, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so focused and so concentrated on, on the statistics of judo because I'm now working to, on, uh, I have to finish uh, Tbilisi uh, competition. I mean the full analysis because I have different steps to course. allow people, yeah, to allow people to see data as uh, as soon as possible uh, after the after the competition. And so uh, you know, I'm like this. But uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's, it's a, a very very nice news to hear uh, that about uh, about uh, about this. Yeah, this is why I, I try to make the, our conversation that have will have some message. And this message, uh, dear uh, our guests, will come. Now I ask our guest, Emilio, to show you a little bit about yeah. Judo Data. Me yeah. personally, using this for the quite long. I was starting step by step using different video recording. Try download the videos from YouTube, cutting, showing, looking how efficient are players, putting on the paper how different players move, attack, defense, and then just giving some opinions because always we talk about the opinions. But what judo data changed in my mind? It showed me numbers, and the numbers right now. And we can even talk like this, numbers in sport change the rules of the game. Because if you know efficiency of position, basketball, you know that you can need to protect Steve Kerry because he will throw from this position 70%, you never allow him, you will defend him. If you know Cristiano Ronaldo, he score from everywhere, but his move statistically is this and that, you, you can make it. In volleyball, you know this, teams attack this angle and you need to block this to have certain efficiency and now we have chance to transfer this to judo and i'm giving yeah. this share screen to you show us okay. this magic okay so i'm i share my screen now okay uh so uh this is of course the the home the home page where there are a lot of information uh, about, uh, for example, athletes, men and women, and uh, the last analyzed competition here. Uh, like, for example, we got, um, let, let's talk first about competition. So, uh, the best performing men and the best performing woman, and uh, according to their performances index, and later on we will, uh, we will see. And then some, some, uh, some, easy numbers, so it means contest number, and uh, now another not so easy number, so the average contest duration. Everyone knows that 
uh, the, the, the duration of a judo contest is four, four minutes. Um, but in judo, of course, we have the, the ippon, and uh, it, so, so it means that uh, a contest can finish also before. So the average duration of the total amount of, of uh, contest is three minutes, 27 effective, effective minutes. So because in this- we, we, we have the, the, the pause between an Ajme Mate, we have the little stop and then we, we go again. So now I will stop you a little bit just yeah. to make our, uh, our listeners understand and tell like this. You analyzing every player that competing internationally in each contest, you analyzing every their action to have this data for. I'm right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the point is that I analyze every single contest of uh, every single competition in the IJF World Tour. Wow. I have to stop. Yeah, I have to stop in the IJF World Tour because uh, each contest. Big. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you think about uh, that, uh, each contest is about the three minute twenty seven. But to analyze those three minute twenty seven, I need minimum ten minutes. So if you make ten minutes per four hundred seventy four contest, is a lot of time. <laughs> really, it's a lot, really of time. a lot of time. But I believe. Yeah. Believe you know you're not do, doing this yourself. When we spoke, you you, you got quite big team and you developing yeah. this different systematic, this different automatizations. We spoke about tell about this that people understand that this yeah. is not you clicking, but this is probably whole team of engineers about the IT guys to creating those kind yeah. of analysis. And I believe maybe that in the future that will be something huge like like IE or something. Tell us about that. Yes, yes, uh, I'm really proud of my team. We are a team of not not so many people. We are four, four people. Uh, Still a huge team. Huge, huge team. Yes, uh, it's it's uh, uh, a good number to analyze what we analyze now. Of course, uh, I think that for each kind of um, circuit, uh, we need a team of about about uh, six six persons in the future. In the future. Uh, that's what, why in the future, because uh, image to do this uh, for the national championships of every country, image to do this for every single circuit of the world. We can we can work on a uh, on a big 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 amount of data, and we can for the first time maybe we can work on the on something that everyone talk about, but it's so, it's almost it's impossible yeti. to do. It's yeti. The, Every, everybody the, talk the long, about. Yeah, the, the long, the long term athletes development. Amazing. What, what to say, what to do with the long term. Uh, maybe we have an athlete that wins in the uh, a young, younger category, and maybe under 15 years old, he wins in a certain uh, with a certain attack system, and then he change, then he modify his body because he he, he grow, grow up, and and then yeah he grow up, and then he start to uh, decrease his performance, and finish and stop. Only with data we have a clean situation of why this athlete do this. So uh, right now uh, my team is doing an amazing job. Now we are able to give the first level of analysis after one week from the finish of the competition. Bravo. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it, okay, the aim is to do the day after, but believe me that right now, one week is a very, very short time. I believe, and, uh, I yeah, believe. Be, be, because everything, Everything we will see here, it's almost done in, uh, in, in this week. This, this, is, uh, this is great because, you know, 
we talk about not only performers, we talk about, as you said, athletic development. We talk about yeah. the injury prevention. We know yeah. the different systems of defense and attack. Where, yeah. where is the problem with the grips? What kind of grips? This is huge data. In my mind, I'm creating the roadmap that head coaches in football have. So they know their team statistically win if the players run certain amount of meters, kilometers on the high speed running and cover certain amount distance on different positions because this giving the load of the game or load of the practice and this give you the certain information how to design your practice in more and more sports statistics coming so i'm really happy to see what you are doing now show show us a little bit more let's a little yeah. bit dig in i believe that we'll have a couple of conversations we, we can explore through education from everything but show us inside let's take some player let's let's see his performance i i can't wait okay 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 so uh we go on the players uh, on the players page here i hope that uh, the resolution is uh, quite good or maybe i can increase but uh it's okay and the uh, let's go to see, for example, uh, the first one in, in the row. This is the, the, the list of all the athletes according to the performance ranking list. Performance ranking list is the world ranking list, so the official world ranking list, with the addiction of the performance point coming from each contest they, they perform. Okay. And then we have a... And then we have efficacy, and then we, we will uh, talk about efficacy because it's something very, uh, very interesting. So we go on Clarice Agbenyunyun. She is, of course, uh, the, the best uh, performing woman of the French national team. She is the, the best performer of all the athletes I analyzed. And so we can see here a little overview, the points of the performance ranking list and the points of the world yes, ranking is. list, yes, yes. And uh, during the, the um, uh, cutting off the, the point of world ranking list from the performance ranking list, list, we can have the delta and it's impressive because it's, a, it's a, about uh, 2,000 performance point. She is very impressive. Then we can, uh, then we can speak about uh, the performance point, but maybe, maybe, maybe in an hour, in another conversation. Now, I don't want to to be so uh, heavy to uh, say something. And um, here we have, uh, for example, her uh, her guard situation. She's left handed. Now, think about this. Everyone knows that Clarice Abenyonyo is a left handed, and it's okay. But what if you uh, have uh, uh, an unknown athlete that and you want to study him because the next uh, the next uh, uh, contest is against him, and no, you don't know if don't if, know. if he's left if he's left or right. Left or right is an, an important uh, information to prepare a contest. And then here we have the athlete efficacy, and then we we will talk about this in the volleyball and and whatever. Yes. Uh, 23 percent is an, an amazing efficacy amazing efficacy you have to think about that the average efficacy all over the world is 10 percent so 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 can i ask the question this yes, athlete efficiency index is what yes. i understand number of attacks that was the points or yeah, yes so no, this is the, how the efficient she is in her attack and you just tell yes, me you just tell me that the average world ranking is 10 percent and yeah. she's 23 that's 20, me she, every down. four attacks f f every four attacks she can score uh yeah uh every 10 every uh, every 10 attacks let's do easy every 10 attacks she finished the competition because every 10 attacks she has two points and wow. so, uh, if we have uh, we have two Vazari now, uh, it's finished. So every she she has ten attacks to finish the the contest. 
the conference. Bravo. This is, this is, for example, not only about thinking about of judo, but thinking about strength conditioning coaches. This is um, think about how much, how much she, how, how much energy she saved mm. having this kind of efficacy. Huge, huge amount. Yes, yes, she saved a lot, a lot of energy, and she will be ready to to be very strong in the in the contest. Further, further contest. Yes, yes, yes. During watching this website, I see something because we could talk about the statistics. What is the yeah. meaning of this small dot statistic here on, on Clarice? Can you show us what you hide there? Here? Yes. On the, yes. Okay. In the statistic page, we go a little, a little bit. A little bit is not so, not so little bit, but we go deeper in the statistical analysis. Oh. Of course, we, of course, we always have the efficacy because this is a key point of my study. Then we have the number of uh, analyzed competition, uh, analyzed contest, and analyzed segments. Segments is when referee, segments is the active time of the contest. As we, uh, as we said before, uh, we have uh, uh, four effective minutes of contest. Segments are the effective part of the time. So when referees say Ajime, and then he says Mate, it's like, you know, uh, when, you, when you set up a strength conditioning for, for one athlete, you say, okay, you have to do five sets of one repetition with 95% with, uh, of the load. Okay, so segments are the five sets. And then you have the load, and then you have the, the of course, the rest. Yeah, between this, the, the load. this is huge data. How to change the approach for not only for the training, but also how many actions coming in the competitions, how efficient. Yeah. And then you got the statistically time. What is your work? And then what we want to develop from my perspective, coming from this statistic, I want to think how to develop power under fatigue. That will be the crucial component to win the contest. Yes, of Yes, of course. And then we have, you have, uh, um, we can manage also the number of segments, of course, average number of segments in the competition. That is seven. So seven, seven segments for a total of three minutes, 24. She's able, it, it, of course, average, uh, average number to finish a, com um, a contest in three minutes, 24. So almost, almost at the end, but we know also that she has uh, a long, long, sometimes she has a very long uh, contest in the golden score. That, of course, it's average time before the limit is one minute 50. The average time she's able to win in before the limit, so scoring Ippon or Wazaria Vazete Ippon is one minute 50 seconds. So it means that this average time is given for small golden score, small, very long golden score that enlarge the time uh, impressively. But the most of the times she's able to win in one minute 50 seconds because why I can tell you this because if we watch this kind of um, graph we can see that for six, uh, 67 percent of the time she is able to finish BL so before the limit and by clicking wow. on this part we can say that when she wins of course before the limit 94% is because she scored Ippon or Wazaria was at Ippon. So, perfect. Now I will have the questions because I know the system quite quite well. I know how to analyze, but I think the wide, wide range of coaches would like to see. Do you have some secrets? Can you say us for this player what the technique she's most effective? Do you have something that, that show us, let's see how Clarice, maybe can be other player, 
is effective in which technique. So me as a coach preparing my game strategy for her, I know what I need to be careful. Yes, so we go on the technical overviews and here we have the balance between uh, wow. Dan Nagevadza and, uh, and Received Nagevadza and uh, look at Dan Nevadza and Received Nevadza. And here we have some numbers uh, about this. So she's called nine, nine times Ipon. It's impressive. Or because think about this, she performed 103 attacks. She performed. I, I registered yeah. one time, 103 what? attacks, and on those attacks, she performed nine times Ipon and 15 times Wazaari. Wow. And so by doing this balance, you have the, effi uh, the efficiency. And by doing the balance between uh, her number of attack and the total action number, you have the um, rhythm of the contest. She's, oh, we can see also here, she has a, an average uh, rhythm in the attacking because uh, we are quite balanced. Yes. But sometimes, sometimes you can see something different. For example, the, the, the most iconic for the women is, uh, is uh, Tina Tersteniak. Uh, the, the green part of Tina Tersteniak is uh, impressive. And for the men, uh, one, one example is Matthias Kasset. But this is also an overview of the technical situation, but we can go deeper in the Nagewaza statistics wow. here. Uh, we, we need a little bit to, to load, and then we can say that. Wow, well, tell us about this high. Yes, what? high okay. double collar is the favorite kumikata she uh, used during her performance. So it means, uh, like, in the, in the ancient time, we call this Korean grip, you know? Because yeah, 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 of course, Korean grip. Co collar and the top. Yes. But Korean grip. Why Korean? Everyone do this kind of grips. Yeah. <laughs> so I got I I double collar uh, like this, and we have ninety four itemized attack, and and then we say that Coach Gary is a favorite uh, favorite uh, attack. We Opa, sorry, 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 sorry. favorite attack. Um, she did it 80, uh, 18 times, and uh, the score. The, the, the efficacy of the technique is about 22%. And if we click on, uh, on the, um, sorry, if we click on the, on the technique, we can see here that for 49%, she did this kind of technique with the eye double collar uh, grip and she scored no Ipon, but four Vazari, two Kinza and 14, no score. And we also, and we also, and then we can reset everything, and we can do this also with other techniques. So, but, for this moment, I wanted to make a small pause and ask you the questions again. Yeah, your team behind Judo Data, doing this for all top international players taking the contest right now. Yes. So yes, people this. from different countries can find the value in judo data. Yes, yes. Everyone, everyone who competed in the IJF World Tour has his, his uh, page on the website. So everyone can have the access of this, this, uh, those data. Now, of course, we, it's easy to analyze the champion because everyone knows. But what about you have to analyze someone not so popular? It's not for Judo popular. Dada. Yeah, yeah, yes. Judo Dada helps you. And those is what an athlete done, but of course we have what an athlete received. So you wanted to say that we got here the defense system also? Of course, yes, yes. The uncle of... Of course, here is another paradox. We take one athlete that uh, it, for her is unusual to lose. So <laughs> the numbers are oh, very, very... 
Clarice, very, very best small. regards to you. You are so good. It's good we will not give any secrets. <laughs> the best regards to uh, to uh, China, judo, uh, China, to France, Judo Association. We are not telling the yeah. secrets. We are just too good. Clarice, go, God bless you. You are <laughs> so good. We, we we have numbers of zero. And Emilio, yes. this is also your safe. So I wanted to make this statement. <laughs> so so in receive, there is this is perfect example exa f f yeah. for our show today. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> of, of course. And then we can see someone else. But uh, and then, but 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 for example, but for example, uh, if we see uh, the Clarice defensive system, she received a lot of uh, of techniques, but only Uchimaki Komi, for example, scored something. Mm. Okay, and we we can go on this, and we can see that okay, from a single sleeve, okay. And uh, the score was Wazari. Mm. I know that this, this score was given by Tina Tirstenian. And now we can start to think about, okay, single sleeve kumikata is uh, a half, half percent kumikata because we have only one grip, but the other one is not controlling. So we can say that uh, uh, she, she took uh, a point against uh, with a, a, a not a not solid kumikata system so uh, a lot of surprising system yes you yes, can yes. say a lot of surprising system because when she has two grips everybody knows that she's too strong and nobody's able right yeah, now nobody can break score. yeah yeah nobody yeah. can break yeah. and she's yeah. just like I'm a different. bone crusher when she come into yeah. tatami she can be like a ice tanker to destroy the big field of ice exactly yes, uh, yes. ice like, crusher and, yeah and and we can do those kind of analysis as as we tell uh, by using our point of view our uh, experience to analyze those numbers because it's important numbers are uh, recognizable all over the world two i can say due in italiano or I can say uh, dwa in Polish, but it's two. We, we know, we know the meaning of two, but what is important is the, the capability to analyze the number two with all the matches we have, with all the matches we have. That's why uh, it's important it's that perfect. Uh, we give numbers. And it's then one perfect. special one one more special one more special thing because now we think about we talk about only about uh, number of uh, of attacks but in the attack system we are you we have also the direction of the attack in this case we also we only have the direction of done attack mm -hmm. This so is here? this is huge important for the coach knowing how is the placement of vectors yeah. of stance yes. how you put the effort for attack and defense it's very important because this will help not only the head coach not only technical coach but also yeah. give the ideas for strain conditioning coach how to protect different amount of positions and also if we got injuries for physios to analyze what kind of deficit we need to reach or what kind of injuries happen or something that we need to do. So yes, I agree, this is a great value. As we see from the, from the graph, she, is, uh, she has a quite balanced system of attack. Um, and of course, she, she, she attacks most in a frontal vector. Now we have to, to make a, a little specification. Uh, we we are watching here Tori. So mm. Tori is in the middle of the graph, watching on the top. It means that in this part of the the I, I can do also something like that. Okay, in this part of the graph, we will have techniques like Ochigari, Kosotogake, Kosotogari. Okay, Kochigari or Sotogari. Okay, then, then uh, in in this other part of the the graph, we have technical techniques with the rotation of the body. 
Okay, so Ipon Serenage, uh, Uchimata, and something like that is in the in the back vector, back vector, because I this am in the thing. center. Yes, and when I turn, it means that I'm turning my vector, because when we say um, I attack backwards, generally we think about uke, because uke is unbalanced. Exactly. On the exactly. Back. Like, like for example, Osotogari. Osotogari, we say, is a back attack. Okay. Because if we think about uke, but in this case, we have to take care because we are talking about Tori. Tori is the man who act. Tori do something. So we have to take care about uh, Tori. If we go on the Kodokan Judo Institute uh, website, we will see this kind of uh, um, uh, definition of the direction. If, we, if you see on Kodokan Judo Institute, uh, when they describe a technique, uh, they say, for example, for a, a simple technique, Ukiyotoshi, the first technique of Nage no Kata, Tori pulls back. I think it, the coaches so, will understand this. This nomenclature probably will be the very specific what will come through different amount of education because it's not like people can digest in a one moment. This probably yeah, what you need to start step by step finding. And this is why I said this is the future. This is the future for analyzing judo contest, analyzing judo matches, analyzing judo training, finding the efficiency. I hope yeah. people that listen to us find a lot of value coming from your passion and coming from your vision. And if you will describe in a couple sentences how you see the judo data in the next five, 10 years, what you would like to make with judo data, with those information, besides, of course, best players will win more medals. Smart coaches will be, know how to use it. And yeah. what you see as an as a, as a inventor, as our, our Elon Musk of judo, <laughs> so well, well, I see. I see in uh, in the future, uh, in ten years. Of course, we are talking about technologies. So technologies has uh, technology run run so fast day by day. So I see in in uh, in ten years, of course, an uh, on live full analysis based on a uh, yes, yeah, based on a uh, artificial intelligence system. Okay, I can tell you, I'm, I'm also working on, on this. Uh, I, I did a, a, study, a study of, um, uh, of, of, I studied if it's possible to do this and I, we find that it's possible Perfect. to do it in some, in some conditions. So in and 10 now. years, I hope it will be developed enough to give coaches a full amount of uh, uh, statistics just 10 minutes after the finish of a single contest. So in 10 years, I see a really on live uh, system of analysis that will help coaches during the competition also. Also, we have to remember that we, we cannot, we have, we have a, a, a particular um, uh, system of uh, in the in the competition we have the epon we cannot improvise something during the competition all the work for our sports should be done before be yeah before and then then a coach analyzing the data at the moment can say to the athlete hey, just like this and he will understand uh, okay it's it's funny <laughs> it's funny no but it's just, not funny it's it's the future just yeah, just with one uh, one gesture, communicate with an athlete that what they prepared before can be done because... You mentioned this. You mentioned this and this put in my mind the 
another word, another topic that beside judo data can do, and judo data can improve one thing, communication. We got a couple great examples, and I analyzing the mostly right now, Polish judo national team giving my thoughts, my ideas, my opinions about the different contest in Poland for for different players, and I saw that communication is the one of the key points that should be improved. But the communication is the skill. And the communication is not like you just say, go, go, go. And I love to use the sentence from Travis Stevens. When you say, oh, times go, go, go. I cannot need coach. I can put chili there on the, on the bench and coach me. About the yes, coaching is the old job that need to must, must be done before for the staff to make the best decision during the contest. And this is why I tell from my, my personal opinion, communication is the key. Trust between the coach and the player is the key. Then trust between coach staff is another key. And going from, from this point, what do you think can be the future besides using judo data for future coaching education? What do you think about the coaching education? Because coaches probably can must go out from the mats, must go out from the comfort zone. And what do you think it will be first step for the coaches if they want to develop, in your opinion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree with your point of view. Uh, now, first of all, we have to say that we had a, a big, a big revolution in the coaching system uh, in, during those times because. If you remember when we uh, when we were athletes, coaches can can also uh, always scream, ah, 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 and you know it seems like they are uh, play driving. iPad, yeah, yeah, like the play iPad and and, and, and athletes. Uh, okay, take take the sleeve and they take the sleeve. They take, take the collar and they take the collar. Do this and they do this. Okay, now it's not possible because coaches cannot speak during the argument during the active time during the segment. They cannot speak. So. The communication should be done between Mate and the next Ajime. So we have a short, short, short time. It's about five, seven seconds. In those mm. five, seven seconds, we have to communicate with him clearly, giving him the necessary information, and he has to understand. <laughs> so this is the point. We have to communicate fast clear and he has to understand so judo data in the field of communication for sure will give um a sort of um communication language if we if we are talking about i don't know um segments okay we can okay let's do this okay okay i i got it i got it let's make an example Okay. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for your example. I love it. So, so. <laughs> yeah. So let's do this example. Um, my athlete is winning by Wazari, and um, it, it and, and we uh, we are at one minute to the end. Okay, one minute to the end. So it means I have to maintain this Wazari, not risking so much. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I know. I know that in one minute we have about if we if everything is average we have about the three segments. Okay, three segments. It's a lot of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can be almost twenty seconds each segment. Okay, now image to say this to the athlete and doing this. Enlarge the time. Enlarge the time. Just this. You can say this in one second. Enlarge the time. Athlete is, you know, excited because the other one is pushing, pushing, him, pushing, pushing him. Try to. No, if you say only a larger time, maybe he not, he doesn't understand. Okay, keep calm, keep calm. What? What is keep calm? Breathe. I breathe normally. You have not. Stay strong. Breathe. Stay strong. Breathe. Stay strong. Yes. Stay strong. Yes. <laughs> Janusz, Janusz always told, always said, why many coaches say breathe? Of course they breathe. They are humans. <laughs> if they not breathe, yes, always like that. That's why I. And but just telling, enlarge the time. He knows that he has to win time. So 
not to close the distance for the gripping immediately. Just maybe walk around or just uh, do something. Then doing the grip, because the grip Must is be. when you go in. Yes, of course. You, you control your opponent with grip. We see with, uh, with Abbenyonyo uh, um, statistics score against. Yeah. And score again. The grip is important to, uh, for, to, to, to control. Then you can win time just, do, just moving and uh, uh, create some movement without attacking. So being proposed active during, be active, okay? Great and fight. Stay, stay safe, stay safe, stay safe. So just saying, enlarge the time. Athletes should know because you have to do it before, before that he yes not to go close immediately always do his good grip and then not to attack because attack sometimes can reach a counter attack so when an athlete attacks is in danger of course because he put himself in danger so just doing this you can maybe win time having one single segment not in of 20 seconds but maybe of 30 seconds, maybe of 40 seconds. If you are good and able to put him on the ground and work in Elaza, you can also win 45, one minute. I remember one, one contest between Roberto Meloni and Winston Gordon. It was exactly this situation. Roberto was winning of Yugo. We have the Yugo. Before, long, yes. Long time. <laughs> long time before. Dinos our area. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Roberto was able to bring me, bring him on the ground, and he worked, just works, just turning, turning, and turning. winning the time. Yes, turning, and he win about 40, 45 seconds. So this is the future <clears throat> in the field of communication. Or, for example, between the, the, the technical staff, <clears throat> sorry, the technical staff, also, everyone should know, even if, uh, for example, that the physical preparator is not a judo specialist, he's just a physical preparator, but he has to know that uh, in, in we, we, we are having a, <clears throat> a decreasing of the performances uh, from the seventh segment, uh, seventh and ninth segment, we have this, this in the decreasing. fight. So, seven, eight block of actions, we are weaker. Yes, yes. telling you yes. that I try to make this because from my side, it's easy to explain. Probably people not understand segments. Mm -hmm. So, what Emilio is saying, we talk about segment or blocks of attack during the yes. competitions. The competition, what mm -hmm. we mean, one fight, yes, of course, yes, yes. This is this is the aim. So, we we uh, judo data will help to communicate with the same language, without not to be necessary a specialist of the judo because physio maybe is not a specialist of judo. What but when what? you talk about a rotation, rotation backward in this direction, or maybe he has a uh, something like that. You yeah, know, it, it's this. you put a nice point based <clears throat> on the communication development of education for the coaches. I really believe that also for your company, we can see soon some education worldwide for the coaches, how they can use it. But beside that, I was in my mind, come the thought, do head coach need to know all the stuff? Or maybe this is the time to change a little bit judo approach to bringing more people to understand judo and helping achieving to be the experts in their field to help head coach or category coach or team coach to make the best decisions. What do you think about putting the multidisciplinary team more in judo? I know maybe this will be more needed more resources, but I think the professionalization is key component for this because exactly judo is one of the hardest sport and this in small investment can bring long-term effect if the head coach will have the support for educated experienced people that they know how to 
read data, use data, use strain conditioning, use physio, use injury prevention, everything. What's your opinion about that? Well, again, again, uh, I find myself uh, aligned with, with your point of view. And I, I'm, uh, I, I can say this. Today, today is another era. Uh, today we, are, we face another level of athletes. The, the actual athletes, the, the, the nowadays athletes, are not as we were in our time. They have more knowledge. Uh, they are much more complete than when we have than when we are when when we we, we when we was past. competing yes 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 also when yes. the better players compete than us <laughs> it's different yes of course it's yes of course it's it tot it's totally different we live another era we live the era of social media they are also involved in the promotion of their uh, their image in the social and maybe numbers can help also but um, by the way by the way according to me um, a head coach should know everything but should not do everything a head coach is a head coach because he is able to process everything from different fields okay but doing this uh, doing this is very hard when we are when we talk about a huge team. So image now <clears throat> having one coach and one athlete. It's easy. It's easy it's to manage. Easy. <laughs> easy. 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 Quite easier. <laughs> okay. Quite then you easy. got some it's strength nothing. conditioning coach twice a week coming I mean, physio. It's, it's easy. Quite easier. But when you have a, 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 when you have a, a, a big big team, a big team, and, and a big team, I mean, you have senior and junior and cadets and maybe some interaction between them because we have to, you have to grow this. And, but also you have the Olympic team in preparation for the Olympic games, but we, you have also, because it's, it's necessary to think about the future. So you have the Olympic team, but you have the second line that has to improve. And then you have the cadets that will improve for the next Olympic period. We you need to build to the pyramid, yeah. We need to be you pyramid to... of everything. Yes, so so head coach should, should be a knowledge of everything. But the most important thing, he, uh, he, has, should, be, he should be able to manage all the information for all the specialists because he otherwise is too big. So it's necessary. It's necessary to have a multidisciplinary uh, team in the technical direction team. Okay. Because nowadays it's not possible to speak with an athlete and say, mm, according to me, you have to, you have to clap your hands twice. No, according to me, doesn't exist. <clears throat> Numbers, data, and the person in the special field who are able to, to analyze those data and give you the correct information to improve yourself. This can be done only with the staff of persons who believes in their leader, the head coach, and everyone push in the same direction. Yes, not this pull different is, directions for fighting no. and being like, I'm the strength conditioning coach. I want to do only gym training and it's, it's, it will never work. I know this. And this is not only being head coach, but also have the head coach and assistant coaches responsibilities, yeah. having strength conditioning, having physio, having maybe psychologists, nutritionists. They can work together. Sometimes we know there is many roles. A team right? manager. Team manager. Yeah. A team exactly. Man, a team head manager coach also. Is, Everything. Yes. I have. Yeah. I have. I have a big experience uh, after after um, London. Maybe yes. Maybe London Olympia. I have a big experience in 2000, 2000, uh, for, uh, 2015, Yes. Before the Rio Olympics, uh, I had the, the honor to be in a conference with uh, Marcello Lippi. Marcello Lippi was the the national national head coach of the Italy that wins. The, the world championships 
for, uh, in in uh, in, uh, in Germany, and he shows this kind of uh, of uh, assessment. I am the head coach. I have to know everything. I have to manage data, but I have not to 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 keep this data. A specialist will keep with me always. Make some. <clears throat> Uh, briefing, briefing before yes, mm-hmm. briefing before, briefing the briefing after a competition, a single training. Okay, it's hard. It's hard. Just just in in terms of time because you have to do a briefing before the training, for example. Then the training. Then a briefing after the training. You see this, this, this. this. Okay, what you see? This, this, this is. It. It's hard. <laughs> you it's know. Not a, it's hard. It's not as before that you say, oh, train, okay. ajime, mate, no, Finish. it's work. But yes, but uh, nowadays and in the future, more than today, athletes need specialists, people who work properly in their field. Mm. And to do this, you need a team. And you need this- a team and you, have, you need tools. Judo data, maybe. <laughs> yeah, exactly, it's judo data is good equipment, good quality, good training yeah. equipment. It's many things that coming from prof- professionalization mm. of our beautiful sport. What what I wanted also mention that, and I will share in this one when you talk about Marcello Lippi about managing things. I think not only Poland, but many countries are developing judo. There is a lot of countries that are developing quite good athletes. They need to realize that this is the process. This process is not easy, but this process needs consistency, passion, hard work, commitment. I'm many times saying from talking about the judo, I really respect and love seeing our players achieving the success. Nowadays we have a little bit less success, but I see some small future and some bright sign that the judo, Polish judo can develop. And I really would like to help as much as possible with those people that can bring the brightness, bring the brightness for athletes, give them passion to give them, rise them. Because as you said, they need to be managed. You cannot say, yeah. I like this, I like that, and this is my opinion. No, if we talk about the data, every professional sport use the data to make the best decision on the time. I will give an example for our audience. In teams that I work, the coaching staff meetings starting morning before the training, yeah. middle, brief, what we do, what we done, what was good, what was bad, and after. It cannot, yeah. some meetings will five minutes, but some meetings in the volleyball, in table tennis last for two, three hours. We yeah. need to go specific movement. You need to know me as a strength conditioning coach. I need to know the technical part. Okay. Not every strength conditioning need to know, but I need to know the technical part or technical ideas mm-hmm. for my coach to support movement patterns that he want to achieve directions, vector, power, type of strength. And then I need to bring this down. Then I need to communicate with physiotherapists. Hey, maybe I need your help because this player have this uh, this problem. I will work with these two players. Can you work with a little bit stability balance for these two players? So within two weeks, I can take them and load them more because we need this approach to doing better. So in Nagi Uchimata or so the Komigoshi. Maybe we need increase his or her range of motion in the shoulder to make be more efficient in the her favorite technique because injured player not bringing the results. Yes, of so course. we talk yes, about the safety and and the great things. So to summarize, summarize our conversation going uh, with this. Judo data can help. Judo Kawa can inspire. And I'm really glad that I have you today. And maybe you have some moment that you have now to talk with Polish friends. You have any, if you want to mention somebody, this is your time. Polish friends? Uh, yeah. Polish friend, one, one overall, is Robert Klarczyk. Wow. Uh, we we met as as you told uh, as you told before in uh, in uh, during my my uh, Polish 
period with the, with Janusz Pawłowski, and we have a really, really, really good relationship. Uh, today we are in touch constantly. He also, he also knows about judo data, and he use uh, judo data. In, in his, uh, he has a, uh, an open, open uh, Robert open possibility. Is, to, yeah, is one of the then, best people I met. Yeah. What he did, we, we, I really wanted to really ensure. Taking the Robert, taking his personality, going to tough moment, leaving country, try to put the, the, his passion to smaller country, achieve one of the biggest success, Shapoba, coach, you are mentor. This is, I'm saying, I, you can be inspiration for others. And I think Robert, have the enough knowledge, enough passion, enough position to, to to help others, and I believe maybe one day to he can call, help Polish athletes, Polish judo, like he is doing right now with one of the players. But I believe he can do this wider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we we can see it's uh, or it's in front of the the face of everybody that uh, of everyone that. That he now take a big result with Beata. Okay. Big result. Just, yeah. ju just, just training her, not not from long time. It means that a really professional coach can be uh, can make the difference. Just just giving to athletes uh, the possibility to trust him. Yes. But but you know Robert is a really good friend. But uh, I don't want to uh, be focused on our friendship. Because this is this is now Probably something hello apart. To you. <laughs> yeah, this is not something apart. But, but when we when we talk, when we think about Robert Kravchuk, Kravchuk, he was an amazing player, amazing player, and uh, he he is an amazing coach. Uh, he is part of the future coaches that will give another boost to our sport. And I think this because not to be, I don't want to be uh, unrespect, uh, I don't want disrespect the old athletes, but uh, now it's time that a uh, person of our age, uh, with our knowledge, with our experience, improve the things. Robert is one of them. According, according to me, Robert is one of them. As one of them is, for example, Akos Brown for Hungary, as one of them is my big friend Francesco Bruyere of Italy. Yeah. Because, because we have a kind of experience, a kind of knowledge uh, that to managing. Is, yeah, to managing. But okay, now now we come back to the friendship. And uh, I I'm I'm in contact with Robert uh, with uh, with uh, messages and, and like that. And uh, we think we also we many times we speak about system of training and uh, and uh, something like that. And then uh, uh, in Poland, of course, uh, I have one special connection with. Uh, with Dainsk, uh, because I was um, I was together uh, with one 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 player of the national team a lot of time ago. I don't I don't oh, say her name. Yeah, I, I don't no, I don't no, say her name. Because, let's keep the private. Then let's know, focus but, on the. But I have I have a lot of friends. I have a lot of friends there. I really love the country and uh, and uh, one one also one of them was. Uh, Krzysztof with Wilkomirski. Krzysztof. And, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And because we have the same age, we we were athletes in the same period, and we have a good relationship, really good relationship. With with Krzysztof, I am not in touch in in those uh, in those period, but uh, the feeling of friendships is always uh, oh, always a strong. I will give you some uh, news, Krzysztof couple weeks ago officially announced that he would like to candidate to be elected to Polish judo president. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I know, I know something about that. 
uh, but now you you tell me it's official yes and it's official. i'm very yes and very 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 happy uh because of the points i told you before about robert we don't need only good coaches but we need also and maybe more good managers who who are able to look forward in the future and i'm when i say look forward in the future i don't mean one two three years i mean one two three olympic period Cycles. so it means so it means 12 years and now is in charge of our generation my generation your generation robert generation chest of generation to do this not the not not i don't want to be uh, i told you i don't want to be um, disrespectful with other people but today we have the knowledge and we have the strength to do this always we have to remember we have to remember to take care of the elder yes. not because they are older than us elder elder it means they have much yes. more experience experience now so we have to base on our knowledge and their experience to build the future this is the key point so this it's is... important it's important to have people with great experience but it's important also to have people with with the, with the strength to do this with with the freshness to do this and i hope that Krzysztof will will uh, 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 drive Poland to be great again because Poland is a, a really important country in the field of judo all over the world and uh, and should be one of the one of the best country of the world because it's always been like this you have the only one person able to win two olympic games in two different categories yes. in a row valdemar legen is a legend yeah i agree fully so, agree so 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 maybe maybe poland and uh, i i i say sorry to the the, the people who, who now is driving the poland because i don't want to be unrespect but maybe poland need another point of view need another boost and i'm sure that shistov could be the man should be the man so let's make summary let's make summary i i many times agree with you i always looking forward for polish judo hope i would like the people with the bright minds with the bright vision can put the, the right direction for polish judo whoever will be i maybe one day i will have here robert to talk, talk about judo system i also believe i can speak with with krzysztof if he agree one day to come here but you will say the good things about the generations and i always got in my mind sentence respect the past but never stuck in the past go for future yeah, and totally let, agree let's go for future let's show that judo can develop worldwide let's show that judo data that you created can be the boost for others and i wanted to thank you for for your time i wanted to thank you to sharing your opinion your knowledge your passion first of all for judo training info polish coaches i hope you will enjoy that if you have any questions you can reach our guest emilio by email that will pause after the our our conversation if you get any questions related to strain conditioning for judo injury prevention you can always reach me a lot of great stuff you got on judo training info on felipe website i wanted to thank you thank you for your time and hope we talk soon again thank you very much to you my friend uh it will be a very great great pleasure for me to have this conversation and uh, yes of course whatever whatever they want to know about the judo data i am uh, completely at the uh, disposal of people and uh, of course we will keep in touch thank you everybody thank you for for your time 
He was the bard Bibrovich from Poland, former judoka, a media former judoka, big passion, Elon Musk of Judah. I will re remind this again. <laughs> you, you will imagine, you will see this guy will be everywhere. This small app will be everywhere. So I wanted to thank you. Stay in touch, stay safe, and all the best to you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.